This is the Esprit ventilator. Um, it's got a lot in common with all the other vents. It's one of the newer ones, and it's got some features that the newer ones don't have that I'll go over. Thing with every ventilator, as we know, is it has to have a place for the gas to come out to go to the patient, and that's right there, that little opening. And then it has to have a place for the gas to be exhaled, and that's going to be right here when we assemble the filter assembly. Okay, so you got your gas inlet and your gas outlet. Also, you have your power source. The spray runs on electric, so you have an electric plug. And of course, you would plug that into a red uh, plate uh, electrical outlet at the hospital, so you know that it was with the backup generator. The thing the spray has that's a little bit different than a lot of your newer vents is. Most of your newer vents have, you have to plug in air and oxygen from the wall. The spray, all it has is oxygen. You don't have to worry about a source of air because it has an inside internal compressor that runs and takes in room air through this little fan assembly here. Takes in room air and mixes it with the gas from the wall and makes your FiO2, okay? You want to remember when you're setting it up in the ER or ICU, if they have those privacy curtains, you don't want to put this up back against one of those curtains because it will suck the curtain into that and cut off the airflow. So you have to be careful of that. Also remember to clean this off real good when you're setting it up between patients. This snaps right off and you just take the filter, wet it, and then block dry it and put it back on again. Okay. Here's your circuit breakers. This is your electrical connection. This kick, uh, little trap here gets any water condensation that comes in from the tubing and it collects it in there so it doesn't go inside the vent and short circuit things. So those are your basic connections. So the first thing to do now, we're doing our setup. So I'll be your student, I walk in. It's gonna be just like this. I've got settings there on the board. So I'm going to say, well, first thing I have to do is assemble the ventilator. So the first step is to put on the inspiratory and expiratory filter. So I pick up my inspiratory filter and that will fit only the right way. So I know it's right if it fits on there. Then I get my expiratory filter. Looks like this. The expiratory filter has to go in this holder and again it only goes in one way. It won't, you can't put it in wrong. So if it fits in there, you got it in right. And then it just slides in this little receptacle. You close it and make sure it's screwed shut tight so it doesn't leak. Okay, so we've got our inspiratory filter on and our expiratory filter on. Now we're going to put on the circuit. Take the circuit out of the bag, you have to find the inspiratory limb of the circuit and we know that the inspiratory limb is always the limb that has the temperature port on it, on the patient Y, so that's this one. So that goes to the inspiratory filter. So that means the other one's the expiratory limb, so that goes to the expiratory filter. Right there. Okay, we can set this in here to hold it out of the way and we're going to attach a test lung so that when we're putting our settings in it doesn't alarm on us all the time. Oops. Okay, so now I've got the circuit on, circuits uh, test lung is on. Now I just need to hook up the ventilator. So I get my electrical wiring and my gas. Switch up to the electric. And now I have to hook up to the oxygen. Okay. I know that it's hooked up 
I know that it's hooked up to the electric because this light went on. Whenever that green light goes on, that indicates that it, it's plugged in to an active uh, circuit. The, the orange light tells you that it's charging its backup battery. It has an internal backup battery that lasts for two hours. So whenever you plug it in, it keeps it fully charged. Okay. So now that we're plugged in, the gas is in, the gas is on. Now I can turn on my ventilator and wait for it to cycle on. So the toggle switch on and off switch is down here. So I just flick that up and wait for it to come on. It's going to make a noise. It's going to sound like an airplane warming up when it's ready to go. Now it should pop up with a screen that's going to ask me if I want to erase any of the trending information. It keeps a log of like I think it's 12 hours of everything that it's done in the past 12 hours that you can download to a computer if you want to. So if this is the same patient and I just disconnected him for some reason, I'll say yes, keep all that information. But if it's a new patient I'm putting on for the first time, I can erase all that old memory. So I says, do you want to erase it? I'll say yes. You sure? Yes. So now we're starting over again. Okay. So now on the Esprit, on the bottom we've got volume control, ventilator settings, pressure control vent settings, and non-invasive or BiPAP settings. So if you notice now it's on volume control, all the parameters it gives you are those that apply to volume control, rate, tidal volume, peak flow, all those things. If I put it on pressure control ventilation, over here it says activate, and I, I hit activate. Yes, I want to change. Now all the values are pressure control values, rate, pressure, I time, peep, there's no tidal volume or anything. Okay, and then if I went to BiPAP, it gives me all my BiPAP settings, IPAP, EPAP, and stuff, and I would hook it up to a BiPAP mask instead of an ET tube. Okay, so let's go back to assist control. Okay, so we're on volume control. So now I've got set up, it's running, so now I need to put in my doctor settings. So let's say I'm doing number two on the board, and the doctor's orders are assist control 12. So I'll go up here, go with AC, it's on AC, rate, rate of 12, accept. Okay, tidal volume of 250, so I hit tidal volume and I put in 250. You can either turn the knob or you can hit these little arrows to go up and down, whatever you prefer. And then you hit accept, okay. 40%, um, and a peep of zero. So peep is zero, okay. Okay, so those are all my doctor settings. Now I wanna do, look at my sensitivity. It's eye trigger. On the Esprit, you can either do pressure or flow sensitivity. It's better to do flow if you have the chance, so we'll do flow, and five liters is good, so just hit accept. And then peak flow is set at 50. Let's lower that down to 40, just because. Okay, so that should be all our settings. Uh, our apnea interval is 20 seconds like it should be, okay. So now we've got all our settings in the ventilator. So what I'm gonna do next is attach it to the patient before I put in my alarm settings, because I want my alarm to be key to the patient values, not the blood testimony values. Take it off of here. Attach it to the dummy. I wait and see that the dummy's breathing, and he is. I see his chest expanding. And then I want to check my exhaled tidal volumes to make sure I get at least 100 of what I've got set. So I've got it set to give him 250, and we're getting back 120. So I'll give it a couple of breaths, sometimes it goes up, and now it's 
120, maybe it'll go up again. Okay, so it looks like it's going to be 120. 122. 126. Okay, 150. Okay, so that's within 100. So we'll say, okay, so we check that he's breathing. Okay, we've got our tidal volumes where they should be exhaled. So now we can go and set our alarms. So we hit our alarm setting, and it's asking high pressure. So we know that when we set high pressure alarms, we set them 10 to 15 above our peak inspiratory pressure. So we look down here at the patient data, and we see that our peak inspiratory pressure is 8. So 10 above 8 would be 18. Right? So we set our high pressure. I'm going to round it off to 20. Accept it. Okay. So our low pressure would be 10 to 15 below. So that would be negative. We can't go that low. So the lowest the machine lets us go is 3. So we're going to say 3. Okay. Now, we have no peep, so we're we'll set our low peep alarm at 0. Low mandatory tidal volume. We're giving him a tidal volume of 250, so we want our low tidal volume to be 150. We're barely making it, so this may start alarming again. I might have to lower it, but I'm going to try 150 for now. Okay, our high rate, we've got a rate of 12, so we want to go 10 to 15 above it. So we'll say 25. High minute volume, we want to go a liter above our minute volume. We've got 1.9, so that's 2, so let's say we'll go to 3 for the high. And then the low would be a liter under it, so 1.0 liter under will be just about 1 liter, so let's go to 1 liter. Okay. And apnea parameter 20 seconds, okay. So now we've got all our settings in, we've got all our alarms in, nothing's alarming, so now I know I can go ahead and start my vent check. I've got my ventilator flow sheet, and it says date. Today's the, uh, I forget what today is. 21st. The, 21st. 21st. Okay, so we go 5, 21, 12. Uh, time is 11.05, and mode is... AC, VCV. Our ventilator is the Spree. ET tube size. It's a 9.0. Secured at 20 at the lip. And sonometers. Connect this to here and read our pressure off. I'm going to bleed it off till it's green. And say that it's 28 sonometers. Order is validated, we'll say yes. Rate set is 12. Total rate down here is 12. Tidal volume set is 250. Tidal volume exhale is this one, 162. Minute volume set, we don't set a minute volume. Total minute volume is 1.94. FiO2 is 40% and zero peep. 
pressure support or pressure control. Pressure support is grayed out because it is not applicable, so I put NA. Sensitivity is flow sensitivity, so I circle the flow and it's set at 5 liters. Okay, cancel that. These two are BiPAP parameters, so we just leave those blank. Okay, now we go to our peak pressure. So go to our patient data. Peak inspiratory pressure is eight. Mean airway pressure is one. IE ratio is one to 6.5. Uh, we don't need a I time. Okay, flow, peak flow. We set at 40. We just need inspiratory, we don't need expiratory. Plateau pressure, static compliance. Now this is where it differs from the 7200. It's easy on this machine. Remember on the 7200 you had to put in your one two second pause and you had to get your plateau pressure and, and do a static compliance calculation to figure out the static compliance. This one, all you do is hit this little lung icon. Look and see where it says static compliance and resistance. Press start. And then hit accept. And it gives us our static compliance is 44. And our plateau pressure is 5. That's all you have to do. It's done. Okay. Then it asks for auto peep. To get auto peep on this vent, you do your expiratory hold. Try it again. Keep holding it in. Okay, so it was 0 0.2, it was negative, so there is no auto peep. So you put 0. Um, respiratory constant, we don't do those. Now you go to your alarm settings. High pressure is 20. Low pressure is 3. High rate is 25. There is no low rate. High tidal volume is, low. we don't have one. Low tidal volume is 150. High minute volume is three liters. Low minute volume is one liter. Air trapping, I don't know what that is, that's on there. Apnea time is 20 seconds. Okay, so that's my vent check. I didn't do any ABG, so I'll just blank all those out. SAT will say I'm looking at the monitor. Oh, it's 95%. I would write that in there. Um, resuscitation bag at bedside, yes. HME we're using, not a humidifier, so I circle. Uh, HME, write that in there, HME. Um, suction, we'll say I suction in, and then I would initial it WMRRT and sign it down here. Put my initials, and that's it. So then I would say I'm finished with my vent check. I want to order an ABG in 30 minutes, and I want to order a stat chest x-ray for two placement. That's the procedure. Okay?